हेलो वेलकम डॉक्टर सुषमा सिंह दिस साइड टुडे इन यूनिट 19 वेरियर एल्विन एंड जीएस एस पर्सपेक्टिव ऑन ट्राइब्स वी कंटिन्यू आवर टॉपिक आई हिस्ट्री ऑफ द ट्राइबल वॉइस द नीड फॉर स्पेशल प्रोटेक्शन ऑफ अब ऑरिजन ट्राइब्स वॉज नॉट कन्फाइंड टू द एरियाज नोटिफाइड बाई द एजेंसीज एंड इन नाइनटीन नाइनटीन एंड एक्ट नोन एज गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया एक्ट नाइनटीन नाइनटीन प्रोवाइडिड दैट द गवर्नर जनरल इन काउंसिल मे डिक्लेयर एनी टेरिटरी इन ब्रिटिश इंडिया टू बी बैकवर्ड ट्रैक and that any act of the indian legislature should apply to such backward track only if the governor general so directed this legislation of 1919 was a forerunner to the government of india act 1935 and the government of india order 1936 excluded areas were backward regions inhabited by a tribal population to which acts of the dominant legislature or the provincial legislature were to apply only with the governor of the province the intention of this provision was to prevent the extension of legislature designed for advanced area to backward areas where primitive tribes may be adversely affected by laws unsuitable to their special condition all uprising were the last resort of tribe tribesmen driven to despair by encroachment of the outsiders on their lands and economic resources in the mode of colonial governance illegation extortion and the oppressiveness of the corrupt police were the immediate cause of rampa rebellion which started in march 1873 in the east godavari district the most significant ones were the billa munda and the thana bhagat movement the amendments made by the government consequent upon the santhal rebellion in 1856 to 57 were not extended to the mundas although they were facing similar problems the consequent alienation of land dealt a cruel blow to all that the tribals cherished in their life the birsa movement aimed at complete independence the tana bhagat movement was anti missionary and anti british they sought to right the tribal people of vices and weaknesses and they refused to pay rent to the ground that they had cleared the forest and as such were the masters of the land they demanded self government abolition of kinships no rent payment perfect equality between men and men as a consequence of these movements tribal improvement society came into being institutions designed to introduce reforms and stimulate development these movements have been characterized as revivalist backward looking as it were the simon commission and the government sought solution to the tribal problem within the existing political structure the policies framed were unrealistic most funds meant for tribal were cornered by the non tribals thus the government failed to use the feeling of the tribals the government responded with the government of india act of 1935 which prepared the legal foundation of the coming into being of the modern state in india and its structure of governance in keeping with the spirit of the queen proclamation it constituted the exclude 
excluded and partially excluded areas for forest dwellers and tribal settings them apart from the mainstream the character of the tribal movement changed under the government of india act of 1935 and the first ever election were held in 1936 pan tribal organizations emerged to make their voices heard for instance the chota nagpur catholic sabha and the chota nagpur adivasi mahasabha in 1949 this this mahasabha was wounded up and the jharkhand party new regional party created Now let us move to the point nationalist freedom struggle and tribals The nationalist freedom struggle was not rooted in the tribal and peasant movement the Indian National Congress questioned neither the repressive legislation nor the cultural policy of the British it could not draw up the heritage of these movements because it had internalized this cultural policy it did not reject the way tribals were being thought of and talked about as backward and primitive people nor was any question asked as to whether regulative state control was absolutely necessary congress justified protection and criticized exclusion this it was observed later prepared the way for the development programs it was expected that these would enable the tribal population to absorb the normative order of industrial modernization The Congress clarified its position thus on the exclusion of forest communities in its 1936 Fazpur resolution. This Congress is of the opinion that the separation of excluded and partially excluded areas is intended to leave out of the larger control disposition and exploitation of the mineral and forest wealth in those areas and keep their inhabitants apart from india for their career exploitation and suppression in accordance with the spirit of this exclusion policy it was further stated that the adivasi's interest would be best served through their exposure to modern influence like education and the implementation of conservation laws the industrialization of forest produce may be considered essential for the progress of adivasi society tribal protest was considered an indication of their inability to adjust adapt and change those who argued on their assimilation subscribed to the norms of mainstream development under the british regime they were unaware of the contribution the tribal forest dwellers could make to the struggle for freedom and in independence questions concerning their knowledge and its relation to their way of life were ignored even though they were highlighted by tribal protests this was in agreement with that jawaharlal nehru thought on the tribal position he said at the opening of the first session of the scheduled tribe and scheduled area conference in 1952 for half a century or more we have struggled for freedom and achieved it that struggle apart from anything else was a great liberating force it raised us above ourselves we must remember that this experience of hundreds of millions of indians was not shared by the tribal folk it is clear that 
they struggled and protested against british domination but there was no pathway to exchange their experience with other indians because on one hand they were politically marginalized in excluded areas and on the other they were social outcast of the so called dominant societies they were thus outsiders the position of the tribals cannot any longer be understood from the standpoint of this mainstream mode of governance here we want to close this lecture thanks for listening